fucking truck hit her. Jesus Christ. Animal rights activist Regan Russell was killed while standing in front of the entrance to Fearman Slaughterhouse. Halton police are conducting an investigation. Regan was there telling the truth about what really happens to these animals. And she was killed as a result. The industry here is very powerful and it will stop at nothing to make sure that people can't see the horrific conditions that animals are enduring. The government says it's trying to protect farmers and animals from trespassers. Bill 156 is a pro-agriculture act. It essentially stops protesters and extremists from giving water to the pigs like we see down here every couple days. Yeah. Who wants to put up with that harassment and get hassled? Look at this. These people here are illegally watering, touching, and stopping and interfering with a truck. They just want us out of the way. The police want us out of the way. The politicians want us out of the way. Movements have martyrs. That's the way it goes. This is a moment that is going to reverberate across the whole world, and it has. What's your name? Regan. Regan, beautiful activist trying to give water to the pigs. Animal Save Movement is an umbrella of groups around the world. And what we do is we go to slaughterhouses and we bear witness to animals. Oh my God. These animals are suffering. And one of the important things is, is to acknowledge that they exist. So what we do is we stop the trucks in the entrance and then we ask for two minutes to be able to give them water, compassion. And over the years, these truckers understand what we're doing. Two minutes! Regardless of if they agree with us or not, they know why we're there. They have cuts all over them, they're bleeding. I've seen ones with open infections. We've seen pigs passed out from heat, exhaustion. It's a living, breathing nightmare for the animals. And the one threat that's always there is that they're terrified. And then we move out of the way of the truck and the truck goes into the slaughterhouse. <laughs> If you look online or if you look in the commercials, it's all these happy animals loving their lives, but that's not the reality. I didn't know that that's how they lived. How would I know, really, until somebody goes in and exposes yes. it? It is shocking. Yes, it is. So yeah. where I come every Sunday yes. here. And Regan wanted the public to see this. She wanted to do all that she could. She was willing to put her own freedom at risk. People say we're breaking the law by storming. How do you think women got the right? How do you think slavery was abolished? People stood up and broke the laws. They're, they're stupid laws. This is my dad. We've known each other most of our life. We have been a couple for the last 19 years. I would attend protests with her or rallies. You know, she liked to know that I had her back. It was all about justice for Regan. She knew what was right. What are you feeding the pigs? And she was basically saying, when anyone is suffering, you just do what's right. Is your breath trespassing? That's the That's kind of her in a nutshell, because she said, if they arrest me, then I'm gonna get the story told. It's private property. Yes. How do we know what they're doing yeah. in there, except that we get video footage of it. They won't let us in, because they know that what they're doing is wrong. The Ontario government is looking to strengthen laws that shield farmers from animal rights activists. The government says it's trying to protect farmers and animals from trespassers. We're devastated about Bill 156. They're trying to criminalize whistleblowers. And these ag gag bills keep popping up all over the United States and Canada as the industry tries to silence its critics and tries to hide the truth. One of the only chances that the public has to see the conditions that animals are enduring is during transport. And the industry here will stop at nothing to shut down those videos. Uh, what we also know um, through doing research is that some truckers here in Ontario have taken a position that Bill 156 somehow entitles them uh, to act in a more aggressive fashion. There's been, I think, a lack of patience and some sense of entitlement when they're encountering these types of vigils. I thought I'd just do a quick little video here just to show some things. We are down here at Fearman's. Let me just turn that camera around. Look at them all. 
two minutes. Here's the pig safe group. I refuse to block the road for them as it's not my job to witness for their safety. They should take their own safety into their own hands and have a court. So they find us as opponents to what they're doing. These trucks have run at us before and we've had lots of near misses where we've literally had to jump out of the way. Almost got run over. When the government passed this Bill 156, I suggested to Regan it might be more dangerous. Maybe the younger generation will figure out something and we'll support them from the side. After Bill 156 passed, we didn't know how long it would be before the bill came into effect. So people organized an emergency vigil outside of Fearman's, which could have been one of the very last opportunities to legally see what was inside these transport trucks. And the evening before, we were having a chat about maybe not going at all. She texted me, she said, are you going tomorrow? And I said, yeah, I'm gonna go to the visual. And she's like, she was so upset because of Bill 156. That day in Fearman's, we got there like 9, 9.30. We'd be there for like an hour or two. This is the pig slaughterhouse in Burlington, Fearman's Port. So it was basically a typical day, but it was very hot. <sighs> This is the third truck we've seen and we've been here for less than 10 minutes. Regan, there's a one here. Can you get her this one? Right here. See her? Can you get her? Two trucks in a row. We can't even get enough water. I'll, I'll get him. Let me give her some water. Look at they came in the heat. It's like 100 degrees inside here. We're suffering. We really are suffering. So our vigil was scheduled to end at 10:30, and at 10:20, I guess there was this truck that came. That was the last truck of the day, and we debated even doing it because we were going to leave, and we just said, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll do it." And you know when they're going to be aggressive because there's different things that they do. But he saw us and went, oh. So he went in the left-hand lane. He's like, if you want to bear witness, you guys come out in the street and do it. So this trucker just won't come in. So he's forcing us to bear witness in a very, very dangerous place. And he's trying to piss off the other cars. And we are bearing witness and it was extremely dangerous. There were cars right behind us. And then all of a sudden, he burst forward and accelerated. And he just went from the, from the wrong lane and just accelerated and went straight at her. <laughs> Truck hit her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> no words. And I got to the other side and I saw her and she was lying underneath his front tire. I saw her body, it was cut in half. <laughs> Even though my brain said like, there's no way she's alive, her face was completely white. But I mean, I, I called 911 because I don't, you know, I don't know. Comes the ambulance. My, um, my good friend said there's been an accident and in a split second, I knew it wasn't good. It was the most traumatizing thing I've ever seen in my life. And, and then we all gave police statements. The witnesses who were there that day made clear observations of the interaction between Regan and the truck. 
each one of them was able to make those observations from a different vantage point. He definitely saw her. He knew exactly what he was doing. I'm not going to call him, uh, you know, that he intended to murder, but he certainly intended to run at her and scare her and look what happened. He knew that he hit her. He saw that he hit her. He dragged her and then still didn't get out of the car. I don't know, like as a normal reaction as a human, you would get out and see, see how you could help, right? The number one priority for us is to ensure a thorough and comprehensive investigation and an objective outcome at the end. It's unclear exactly what level of resources were invested, and it appears that some valuable leads were not explored thoroughly or at all. They never asked me for, yeah, my number so they can follow up with me or anything like that. They just took my statement, and that was the last I heard from them. Superintendent Davis says the investigation is almost complete. There's no way he could have missed her 40, 50 feet away out in the middle of the road, just standing there. Right now you can see I have a clear line of sight down each side of the trailer because I can see that officer there. I can see the one across on that corner standing there. I can see the corners in front of me and I can see these people here. From my footage, like you can see the truck and where we are. And he was there more than five minutes watching her. And he finally decided to drive in and killed her. So, yeah. Police did not lay criminal charges against the truck driver. Instead, what they did is they laid a provincial offense charge, which is more like a traffic ticket. But we know that the police do have a videotape of what went down, and there have been many calls for them to release that video to the public. Activists took their protest to Halton Police Headquarters. Activists rallied to call for more serious charges to be laid in the death of fellow activist Regan Russell. Regan Russell was violently killed. She was dragged. 50 feet! How is that just careless driving? It's the position of Animal Safe Movement that it would be appropriate right now for the police to proactively release the video to ensure that there's full transparency about what happened that day. The death has dramatically heated the animosity between Ontario's livestock industry and animal activists. This incident really touched a nerve with some of these truckers. It's been very strange to see the counter protests where people are showing up, putting up offensive signs. They're saying things like Regan committed suicide. You killed your friend! Let me show you what's behind me. All the counter protesters are here. You know, when they're giving water to the pigs, you don't know what they're giving. It could be anything. 100%, we have no clue whether it's water, it could be acid, it could be anything. We've seen them do some pretty extreme things in the past and it's wondering how far they're actually going to go. You are definitely not allowed to harass truck drivers in their workplace, but that's what seems to be going on in front of this plant. This is unreal. This is what we deal with in a civilized uh, society. A lot of the truck drivers, they understand we're not there to hurt them, we're not there against them, we just want to give comfort to the pigs, but a lot of them, they just have such hatred for us. The system is evil, not necessarily the people in it. And the truckers are also trapped in the system, and they may not realize it. And if someone threatens your livelihood, the first thing you're going to do is shut them down before you want to understand and it's a really hard fight. This is really hard, especially, you know, if our friend gets murdered, it's in front of our eyes. Movements have martyrs, and Regan Russell is a martyr. Right now we have hundreds of activists here. We're gonna go make sure that everyone gets to know about what happened to Regan Russell. It could have been any one of us. We are here in Dharavi, Mumbai, India. We dedicate this activity to Regan Russell. She's always in our hearts. I struggled a bit through summer emotionally, but seeing people in Berlin, Argentina, Italy, all over the place, it made me happier and gave me some hope to see that. And to see the world explode around Regan was beautiful, overwhelming at times. But there they were, discovering something that 
I've known for a long, long time. And we're going to continue fighting for her and for justice. Regan was a force of nature. She was steadfast in her passion for animals. Regan Russell literally gave her life trying to draw attention to one of the most pressing social issues of our time. We need to make sure that Regan's legacy lives on and then to fight the bill that she was so passionate against fighting. It's about confronting the reality of what you are really doing, getting real, getting real. Join us, that is what Regan would have wanted. And Tolstoy said, when you see suffering, you have a moral obligation not to turn away, but to get closer, see if you can help, and even if you can't help, to bear witness.